Welcome, everybody, to your very first video over MySQL. Now, I know what some of you are going to be saying. What? This ain't your first video over MySQL. You actually did an entire series over this. Yes, this is actually my second series over MySQL. The reason being is that MySQL has changed a lot over these last few years, and it was just many years ago, so I think I've learned a lot more about MySQL, and I'm prepared to make an even better series. Ha! <laughs> so, that's what we're doing now. Hopefully this series will um, satisfy you guys who've been wanting some more of MySQL because this series is going to be more in-depth, more techy and cool and up-to-date and stuff. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So what is MySQL? MySQL is a relational database management system. Essentially, a database is a software that allows us to store tons of data or information. So data can be really anything. Think of something you want to store that you can use at a later date. Often, databases are used behind an application. So an application might say something like, hello, and then say the username. This section right here has to come from something. All of this information is stored inside of a database. So this allows us to make apps that are dynamic. What does dynamic mean? It means changing, but only certain parts. So often we'll have an application. Let's say this is our application, right? And we might have some kind of code that presents this information here. But it's dynamic in that this username can change depending on who is signed in or what your username is. This allows sort of like a separation between the application and the data that the application needs. So you have the application here and the database. The code itself is going to get information from the database to present to the user. So let's say this user uses this application, does something on it, and that information is stored inside of the database. Well then later, when he wants to use the application again, we can get that data from the database and present it in the application and then that will be delivered to the user. So this is kind of the key word of it all. We can make dynamic websites, websites that change, websites that render content. So you could make an application that renders your most recent blogs and you don't have to go in there and update your recent blogs every single day or whatever. It'll do it automatically. That's because you can code it and it will do it dynamically. Now the other part of relational database management system is the keyword relational. And this word right here, relation, actually means table. You can use that at a party and impress all your friends. <laughs> okay, so we have a table. And the way things are organized is that we have columns going this way, and then we have rows of information going this way. So for example, we can have a column of a username. And then all of the data in this column is going to be everybody's username. But the way this data is entered into this table is by row. So a specific user, let's say this guy, signs up for an account, he puts in a username, he might put in an email, a phone number, a first name, last name, whatever it is, doesn't really matter. All of this is stored tabularly, tab tably? All of this is stored inside of a table. But it's not just an ordinary table. The table is just the way the data is presented. A different way we can think about it is with the keywords entity and attribute. So an entity would be the user or the person. The attributes would be the username, their email, first name, last name, phone number, all of that good information. Now these attributes that describe the entity, these are stored as columns inside of the user table. Now don't freak out if you don't understand how to design all this stuff yet. That's not the point of this video. The real point of this video is to give you a rough introduction to what databases are and what MySQL is. So now that we kind of understand what a relational database management system is, which if you just need like a one sentence summary, it's a way to store data in tables. Really simple. But now we should move on to figure out what MySQL is. Now as I mentioned before, I have that other MySQL series, and that content is still pretty relevant. So if you want a slower introduction to MySQL, 
go ahead and watch that. Now MySQL is a management system. That means it allows us to store data in tables. And the way we do that is using what's known as SQL. Now MySQL is just a software system that adopted the SQL standard. This my here, I'm pretty sure it was like the maker's daughter's name or something. But essentially, it's just a software that allows us to type SQL and store data in tables. So SQL stands for Structured Query Language. <laughs> Structured Query Language. And essentially, this is kind of like a language that's between computers and humans. So here's where SQL goes. That's because a computer can interpret SQL and a human is smart enough to write SQL. So we can communicate with the computer using this language. And that's really what this video series is going to be about. We're going to be learning SQL, but we're going to be learning the MySQL dialect of that. Essentially what a dialect is, is that it's the way this database system it adopts the SQL language. For example, there's other database management systems. There's SQL Server, there's Oracle, and there's a uh, plethora of other different database management systems. But they all have the commonality of using SQL. There's just some minor differences, and that's where this whole dialect thing comes up. So for example, writing something in MySQL is going to be very similar to writing something in SQL Server or Oracle, but there's going to be some minor differences that's because MySQL has adopted its own dialect. For example, there's extra features in MySQL that are not specified inside of this standard, and those extra features are not gonna be the same as SQL Server and Oracle. But even so, if you know MySQL, it's very easy to pick up another database management system such as SQL Server. That's because they're all based off of a standard, structured query language. Now hopefully that kind of makes sense. Don't be overwhelmed with all of the details. What's really important to know is that MySQL is built off of a standard known as SQL. SQL is the language we use to store data and retrieve data from our database. Now there are a lot of ways you can store information. For example, why don't we just use an Excel sheet? Or you know, a text file. Well, there are a lot of benefits of using these but there's also some really serious downsides. And we'll learn all of those as we go on and you'll see why databases are so important. But to start off, I'll just give you a couple. For one, Excel is just a way to make spreadsheets. And the thing with spreadsheets is that they are all or nothing. That means if you have a spreadsheet and you want to get data from this, you have to look at the entire spreadsheet. You can't just select certain columns. With a database, you can. That's because you have what's known as a select statement. And you can specify which columns. So you could say, I want this one and this one, but not this one. Along with that is security. For example, in a database, you can prevent certain people from doing certain things. In a spreadsheet, uh, you can do that a little bit with file system rules, but it's, it's very uh, limited in that if someone has access to a spreadsheet, they can basically do whatever they want. You could make it read only, but let's say they had read and write abilities. They can do anything. But with a database, you could say, here's some things they can do, and here's some things they cannot do. So you can have a little bit more flexibility, and you can make basically a entire system that allows many users, but you're not going to open up your data to be destroyed by certain people, right? So you can prevent big disasters using a role system. In addition to security, databases also allow us to store much more information. Databases can be expanded to tons and tons of data and still run efficiently. That's because we can separate data very easily, we can index data, and the database management system is optimized to work with a lot of data. Spreadsheets can work with a decent amount of data, but when you are talking like millions of rows, things might get a little clunky and not very organized. So if you're a very small business and you just need to store a little bit of information, I tell you, a spreadsheet will do just fine. A text file might even do just fine. 
But if we're talking about an enterprise application that's going to have tons of information, in that situation, I know you're going to want a database. So we've talked about what a relational database management system is. We've talked about what MySQL is, but now let's talk about why MySQL. Why would you want to choose MySQL over some of the other database management systems? One reason is that MySQL is open source. That means you can go and view the code that actually makes the database. In addition to it being open source, I think it has one of the most flexible licensing systems, meaning you can do the most with paying the least and being restricted the least. Because of this, MySQL is often used for smaller projects, such as websites. Claire? Ah! Websites often use MySQL. Literally, almost every website that has a content management system, think of like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, all of those, they're almost always powered by MySQL. In addition to this flexible licensing, there is a small learning curve. So you have to learn a lot to use a database, but once you figure it out, your efficiency goes much faster. Whereas a spreadsheet, you know, it doesn't really require much knowledge, but it takes, it takes a lot more work to maintain. It's a lot less efficient. You end up losing more time upkeeping on all of that nonsense. But MySQL compared to other database management systems, the learning curve is small. So for example, Oracle might have a learning curve like this, you know? <laughs> I'm just drawing random charts, but the learning curve in Oracle, in my opinion, is much higher. It requires more knowledge to get started with Oracle. So for small projects, most people pick MySQL because it's really not that hard to adopt. It just has a small learning curve. SQL Server, well, that's kind of somewhere in the middle. It has a steeper learning curve than MySQL, but it's not too bad. So if you really support the open source community, and you like flexible licensing, if you're that kind of person, I'd go for MySQL. But if you're looking for a world-class, 100% reliable, you know, has to work all of the time, like a crazy application kind of thing, I would go for Oracle. And if it's somewhere in the middle, maybe SQL Server. It also often depends on what code base you're working with. For example, PHP, people almost always use MySQL. C Sharp, people will often use SQL Server. And the reason why is just that certain languages work better with certain database management systems. Most websites built with PHP use MySQL. Does it have to be that way? No. Does every website that uses PHP use MySQL? No. It's just the way people do things. So it ultimately depends on your goals, what you're trying to accomplish. But either way, I think MySQL is a great database management system to start with. So that's what we are covering in this series. If you like this video, please click like, subscribe, and go through this series. I promise you won't be disappointed. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the next video.